Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertel here for the last video in the series, maybe we'll add some more later, Hypertrophy Made Simple, video number 16, Troubleshooting Lack of Progress. For a huge, much longer discussion on that, we have other videos on RP+, we have other videos on YouTube that attack this very, very thing in much more detail. Let's give you the super quick guide to troubleshooting lack of muscle growth progress. You wanna grow muscle, you're doing what you think is right, but it's just not happening in one of your muscle groups or maybe all, what do you do? We got eight quick troubleshooting tips for you. Let's just get right to it. Number one, appropriate and consistent training and diet. If you are inconsistent with your application, don't come to me and ask me what you're doing wrong. You're not doing anything right. Only consistency can lead you to judge whether or not you're doing a good job. So first, get consistent, no negotiation. Next, you wanna make sure that you're going from your minimum effective volume to your maximum recoverable volume, training in that range, at least somewhere in that range, preferably all the way through in each muscle group that you're targeting. If you don't know what your MEV and MRV are, don't even start, find out first. You might be out of that range completely and there's totally makes sense why you're not gaining because you're not even doing enough or you're doing too much. Next, fatigue management has to be in line. Sleep has to be decent. Stress management has to be decent, physical and emotional, because if you're not doing that, then boy, oh boy, you know, can you be interfering with really, really great training and making no gain? So fix that problem for sure. Next, when you're doing your exercises, make sure they have high stimulus to fatigue ratios. They're really good at causing muscle growth and you know pumps and burns and tension and disruption and not too beating up your joints or they're not you know causing a crazy amount of systemic fatigue or something like that. Now, especially you want to make sure you have high raw stimulus magnitudes. Like if you say I have trouble growing my back and I'm like, so like, how does you, your back ever feel like really toasted after workout? You tell me, no, we're going to be picking exercises that toast the crap out of your back. If your back is being toasted and you're recovering and you're eating well, you're almost certainly going to get a bigger back. But if one of those things is missing, including the training really hard and feeling the exercise mess up your back, it's not going to be, uh, rather there's going to be a chance it's not working, right? And then we have an obvious thing to solve. Next, make sure the stimulus to fatigue ratio is high in the rep ranges that you're doing. If you're doing lots of sets of six in the biceps and it just always hurts your elbows and it never feels like you have a pump or tension in a target muscle for your biceps and you do that, you're like, I'm doing all this training. It's a lot of training. I'm doing everything else, right? And I'm like, okay, have you ever tried sets of 10 or 12? And you're like, no, not really. You try sets of 12 and it just burns the crap out of your bicep, huge pump. And you're like, oh, holy crap. Well, it looks like you were just training in a rep range that wasn't that good for the exercise for the muscle group. So make sure the exercise you do and the, and the muscle group that you train, you find those rep ranges that are going to get you good training, usually a diversity of them, but obviously you can bias some of your training into the ones that make the most stimulus and keep the fatigue the lowest possible. Next up, this is a huge one. Be hypercaloric, eat at a surplus when you're trying to gain muscle, okay, in your gaining phases and adding net body weight to yourself over the long term, months or years. If you say, look, I can't get jacked, and you, I ask you how much you weigh, and you say, I weigh 125 pounds, sweet. I started uh, my muscle building journey weighing uh, 20 pounds less than that. And you say, I weigh 125, and like, over the last year I've been training super hard and eating and all this stuff. And I'll ask you like, so how much did you weigh when you started? And you're like, well, like 125. I'm like, so you've gained no weight. I'm like, right. Well, I can tell you exactly why you're not more jacked because of the laws of thermodynamics. Where the hell is that muscle supposed to come from? You got a wormhole button you press and all of a sudden you get more jacked? No way, you have to eat it consistently more than sometimes you want to get the gains. Now look, if you tell me I've gained from 125 to 145 and I just got fatter, I put on no strength and no muscle, look, we have a serious problem. But until you can show me you've been gaining weight, I don't believe that you've even been trying to grow muscle because you gotta make sure the food matches the training and the recovery and so on and so forth. On the other hand, especially for more advanced folks, training side fatigue management has to be there. Deloads, recovery sessions, active rest phases, low volume phases. If you've never done a low volume phase, you've just been grinding yourself into a pulp for two years and you tell me you can't grow, I'm gonna tell you to take a little break and take it easy. And then after that, you're gonna come back and be like, holy crap, I'm getting all these gains. Well, no, duh. So you gotta take care of that. If you don't deload or do recovery sessions, don't consider yourself tough, just consider yourself not the smartest decision maker of all time up to that point, but you can always change. Lastly, 
you got to make all these changes, or at least most of them, for long enough. Folks would be like, man, I've been consistent, but I haven't grown any muscle. I'd be like, how long have you been consistent for? Like, like two weeks, man. What the hell are you talking about? It's got to take months, not weeks, and not days. You do all the stuff for months correctly, especially training hard, having a hypercaloric diet, getting your volumes in, and so on and so forth, and progressing in strength. I can almost guarantee you that you'll grow muscle. And if you can't gain using all these things for months, on end, you're at your genetic ceiling and you've done as well as you can and you can be super proud of yourself. Folks, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning into this series. Best of luck on your own lifting journey. And listen, if you want to know more Renaissance Periodization, starting with this YouTube channel, links in the descriptions. You can check out tons of more info. I promise we have way more info. See you next time for the next videos and the next video series.